Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Tank Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another amazing workshop curation. Now this one came out some time ago, but at the time it came out, I was a little bit busy with some real life stuff, but I really still wanted to cover this. This is so spectacular. This is the King Crab Scavenger Rig. This is a giant walker, a crazy take on an oil rig with legs. So this is a scavenging rig. So the idea is it scavenges parts from the wasteland. And we're in Pertram, the perfect wasteland setting. And you can see that there is various different cranes and contraptions. Now we're gonna see if these cranes work today or if they're just for looks, but you can see they've got full hinge setups to set up so if these do work they could be quite an effective way of grabbing scrap hauling it up and putting it in the two scrap holes up on the top so we'll give that a little bit of a test as well but let's have a look around the exterior and then we'll pop on it inside as well so the exterior is a standard looking oil rib you've got this rusty sort of weathered effect that I absolutely love on ships I don't know about you but you've got this 01 marker on this side you've got these various gantries we've got the inner workings of the underneath we'll explore a little bit later and as we come down we've got the legs down here as well now you'll notice that there's spotlights at various different intervals so you can illuminate what's below you now the legs themselves you've got four on either side and the bottom of the legs seems to be composed of the wheels so there is some friction but you can adjust the friction settings and of course walking over different terrain now the legs themselves are made up of two joint components so you've got this lower hinge with the extendable piston and you've got this upper hinge here so there's quite a bit of flexibility within these legs and you'll see that when we start moving we've got some more spotlights around the front and there's various different piping and gantry and it's a real industrial build I, I really love an industrial build we've got spotlights up here at the front guiding the way and also spotting targets if anything decides to creep in underneath as we come around the other side we've got the same gantry a little bit of a protection a bit of paneling coming down the side there and that is this side of the craft. Now coming up onto the main deck, on this side we've got two large cranes. Now these cranes look like they're capable of maybe hauling a rover or something that could connect up to this section here. So I'm guessing a rover with an underneath connector could connect up here or even a large scavenger ship could connect between these two carriers and either be loaded up by the cranes or be lifted back onto the deck. But you can see we've got a little bit of a cockpit on the side there. We'll give them a little bit of a test later on. Now, the deck is covered in cargo. And I'm guessing if you wanted to use this in a survival scenario, it would be possible with a few friends. You could clear the deck and you could roam around with the legs of this walker, venturing, scrapping and scavenging. So as we come into the middle here, you'll notice that we've got the two grinder pits either side a little bit of detailed marking there and some warning areas as well perhaps these could be little maintenance bays they've got like a collector down there so a vehicle could maybe be loaded on and dumped off with supplies that's what they seem to be or maybe this is where they scrap individual vehicles they find in the wasteland that are brought onto the deck that are too valuable just to drop into the pit you have to use your imagination so we've got entrance way to the main sort of, oh, what would you call it, bridge area, I'm guessing. A cool little radar dome outcrop. And along the side here, we've got these little Sea Wiz turrets. Very nicely detailed, a single Gatling gun turret in here. So not too much protection, but it might be able to keep away a few pirates. Now, as we work our way up the conning tower, you'll see that there's three main decks. And I've got this wooden top cover that just kind of adds the effect. A bit of wooden rust. Nothing says a scavenger like that. And you've got the radar tower over there as well. So that is the external of this craft. Let's go to the lower open deck here. So the lower open deck is a combination of cargo, catwalks, and gantryways. And you get this very industrial vibe down here, and that's exactly what you would expect. So as you're navigating through here, you see these various different catwalks leading over pipes. We've got the pipes that are connecting up the various systems. Coming into the middle area here, that's the engine bay. So the engine bay is running on these hydrogen engines. And I think this hydrogen engine is one of my favorite models. So two of these have been connected back to back to make a giant engine. Look at the little details on these engines. They're great. I wish some of the dials moved and stuff. That would just be really cool. So we've got all these engines coming in through the area. The fans are spinning and keeping them cool. We've got a mini little access area here, caged away with a red light. Give me some warning. Plenty of spare parts down here on these conveyors, as you'd expect of any sort of scavenger ship. And then as we run into here, another sort of spare parts bin, maybe to keep the engine operating out in the desert here, all the dust and fumes, the engines would break down probably a lot, especially if they weren't very well maintained. 
So the various catwalks lead across over to here. Now this is an interesting area. I like how they've used this green. It reminds me of old British tank engine green. And inside here we've got a selection of battery banks. So these battery banks are all powered up. So these are like a big transformer. I'm guessing in some sort of thing. It's been separated away from the rest of the ship itself. Explosive danger. No sparks. No fire. Uh, watch out. Very cool. We've got a little maintenance hatch there with authorised personnel only. Really cool midship deck. Let's head on inside. So to head on inside, we're going to access the main bridge area here. And I'm going to do this with spectator rather than switching to my character so we don't have to access through so many doors. So we've got a little med bay, a little surgery on there because there could be some accidents on deck. You never know what's going to happen when operating one of these craft. And on this side, you've got access to the other side of the gantry. Coming in through these doors and navigating through the corridors, they've used these interior detailed corridors from the DLC. There's a lot of DLC bits in here. And we're into the main server room. Look at this for a server room. Isn't it beautiful? It's got all the switches, all the gauge, all the server racks, and there you go. And that's your centralized server rack right here. Now, if you look around behind here, you can see it's a small ship that's been attached to this large ship area with all them servers and timers for the leg working systems. LCDs all the way have been uh, sort of marked up there with these gauge scripts for Master M. Very nice little server room that giving me some serious inspiration for my own server rooms when I'm building. And out on here, we should be heading back towards the deck. This is just another entrance room and uh, sort of shower block living quarters. Coming back into the centre here, you'll notice that we've gone past the server rack and we need to go upstairs. So to go upstairs, we need to find a ladder. Where's the ladder? So entering up the floors, we're just going to need to keep an eye on to make sure we land on the right deck. We have a briefing sort of canteen room here on this deck. It's the full deck area with a lounge over on this section. We've got this little red light airlock that leads us out to one of the little catwalks. So maybe you can take your coffee and then enjoy the wasteland. Look at the views from this thing, though. There's something about just staring out the window in Space Engineers at the terrain. It just feels so immersive. So we've got ladders that lead us up. So let's keep going. So that is the second deck. And now we're on to the inner working. So this is where the command, the bridge, the... The advanced systems are all controlled from so all the turret seats are here weapons and armory over on this side so over on this side we have the controls of the various claws i believe so it's all laid out here we'll have a bit of a play of this close elbow open elbow extend elbow pistons on and off we'll have a play with that so you've got them systems there and you've also got the systems for the various other turrets and then we have the driver's seat over here so let's give it a go and i think that is a hatch possibly to the roof or to one of the higher areas. No, this is the driver's seat area. So the lower area that we were just at was where the turrets and the various different cranes are controlled from from the window. This is where it is driven from. So we've got the driver's seat in the center. We've got an engine control one. And what are these? These are just various other control rooms. That one, oh, this one operates the cargo base. Let's show you this. So before we take this thing for a spin, we'll bring our character in over here. Grab him on this seat get our camera back outside now this is a really cool way of doing connectors as well so you see this little hatch here that's tucked in if we activate our button one you'll see the hatch opens up oxygen cargo outport hydrogen so that lowers down so it could be docked with a smaller rover some of the smaller scavenger ships and then it tucks up away so it's got a hinge at the top piston in the middle and then a hinge at the bottom and it's all been synced up on a timer absolutely beautiful so we've also got on number six, the little drop elevator that drops down. So you could launch a little team onto the ground area. Very, very cool indeed. I like that. It's a simple but very cool touch. And then on the other two controls, I believe I couldn't work out what these ones did. So these just activate the grinders, I believe. The right and left side grinders. Let's jump ourselves out of that seat. Then we've got the walking bridge in the middle that I'll show you in a moment's time. Uh, so this is forward back and forth. What's this one do? So this is the engine So when we started up the engines and switch the batteries on everything happens from this seat So let's get this walking So to get it walking, it's all been wired up. So it's as simple as pressing one And if we press one again, we should start walking a forward direction If I've wired everything up or have I hit the timers in the wrong seat. Oh, I've desynced it all haven't I? Okay, let's stop everything stop all systems with nine let that timer play out. Okay, and then re-hit one to reset the system, and that should get us walking in a direction. 
Okay, there we go. We're starting to move. What's quite interesting about this is we are moving at only two to three meters a second, but it does cover some ground and it does have some off-road capabilities. We're not going to be climbing up mountainsides, but in these wide open plains and sand dunes, we can easily navigate ourselves around. It's going to be a little bit bobbly there. You'll have to you have to bear that in mind. And sometimes when you hit the timer blocks a little bit too much, you will set them out of sync. So we can go in reverse with this one, we can turn left with this one, we can turn right with that one, and we can stop our systems there with this one. Let's have a look at how the legs are moving. So you can see the hinge at the top is flexing. The piston at the bottom is retracting in and out. And as it retracts in and out and pushes itself along on the arc, it's allowing it to move forward. Let's move on to some crane testing. Now, I've tried to learn the controls. It's not in English, so you're going to have to bear with me. So let's get this crane operational. So first thing first is we're in the seat, we're on the second floor, and we can actually maneuver this crane around. So you can see that we've got a little camera there. Let's jump onto our second tab, and we are going to extend our arm out ever so slightly, like so. And then we can also move maneuver this down. Okay. Oh, <laughs> clang does not like. Right, let's uh, retract this arm in just a little bit. Okay, come on, car. We don't want to. We don't want to take you out. Okay, perfect. Oh, oh, we're doing really well. Okay. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, um, I think we've got a second crane to test out. Let's try and do this one all from the camera seat. Maybe it'll work better. Um, okay. Right, so everything is operational. Let's increase the range of our arm. Lovely. Let's stop it there. Okay, and we're going to push up. Oh, we need a bit more. Oh, no, not too much. There we go. Target in sight. Push the piston out. Oh, we're closing on it. Oh, lovely. Okay, opening the claw. Oh. 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. We need to close the claw quickly. Don't panic. Don't panic, Aaron. Don't panic. Um, let's just let's just retract that a little bit. Okay, car has been picked up. I don't know if it's phasing though. Uh, everything's ready to lock. Okay, I'd say that's successful. I'd say that's successful. Oh no! Stop! Stop! <laughs> okay, let's uh, just leave that there for a second. Let's go back to our controls and just bring it up. Nice and steady. Nice and steady. Uh, cranes are great to build in Space Engineers, but they do love to misbehave, don't they? Okay, so are we over this pit yet? Let's let's get our camera in place. Okay. Because I don't know if we're going to be able to drop this. This is the only problem. Let's bring that down. Good. Right. Okay. And let's open them jaws if we can. No, they're not. What would the number seven do? Five. That twists it around. That might help us in this situation. Okay. Number eight. I don't think I need that. Number seven. Oh, maybe an unlock. Oh, yes. We've done it. Success. Scrap collected. So now it's in that pit. It should just disintegrate away. Yeah, perfect. A little gap around the side. It's always hard to fill in them gaps there in Space Engineer. So that crane worked successfully. Um, that other, I think it was more of an operator error that caused the clang. I think if you operated it safely and you know what you're doing, you'll be absolutely fine. Fantastic. A lovely industrial creation. And I love building cranes. I love having a play with them. So to see someone else who's built some fun cranes that anger clang just as much as the cranes that I like to build. Lovely construction. Definitely check this one out. There'll be a link down to it in the description below. Let me know what you think of this build. What would you change? What would you adapt? And could you use this perhaps in survival?